The following is a presentation of the United Wrestling Network. Hello everyone and welcome into Championship Wrestling. I'm Gilbert Corsi. Tonight more blockbuster action as we press forward in our series looking at the tournament that crowned the first United World Champion. Now this tournament took place in 2020 and 2021 primarily on pay-per-view via Primetime Live and we have it for you now free. We are pulling from the vault as the latest coronavirus surge prompted a temporary pause in our television event. Tonight, it's the semifinals from the World Title Tournament. The Dirty Daddy Chris Dickinson taking on Mr. No Days Off himself and Fred Rosser. Rosser coming in after defeating Eric Redbeard in the opening round. Dickinson gaining victory over Peter Avalon. And also tonight, a never before seen television matchup putting Miranda Alizé versus the Killer Bay herself and Heather Monroe. And a big time main event also from our World Title Tournament. Sean Davari versus Mike Bennett. It is a big fight night and championship wrestling presented by Car Shield starts now. is a semi-final match in the United World Championship Tournament. Introducing first from Killa Hills 10304, weighing in at 235 pounds, the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson. To say the Dirty Daddy has been on fire here in the United Wrestling Network would be a huge understatement. Undefeated both on Primetime Live and in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Yeah, sort of fancies himself, I think, the MVP demanded competition. He's going to have his hands full tonight in the semifinals with Fred Rosser. No question about it, should be a good one. High stakes matchup. And introducing his opponent, from Miami, Florida, weighing in at 239 pounds, Mr. No Days Off, Fred Russell. Why the time has finally come. The minutes, the seconds, the anticipation. It's semifinal, and it's mean dirty. And dirty, I told you on social media, I told you earlier, if there's two things Mama Rasta didn't raise, Mama Rasta didn't raise no fool, and she didn't raise no punk. This is my moment, and I plan on capitalizing it, because it can't go any other way, except for my way, Mr. No Days Off, Fred Ross. Stage is set, a shot to advance to the finals. Unite Wrestling Network World Title Tournament. There you see Mr. No Days Off going right after him inside Cradle, trying to catch the Dirty Daddy sleeping. Usually it's Dickinson that's off to a quick start. Heads up move, but also perhaps as he goes for the cover, talking about Rosser, perhaps also desperation because of that injury brings it. 100%, you can see he has a very protective sleeve on his right arm, which is very severely damaged in that match against Redbeard. And the urgency that Fred Rosser came out here, whoa. Nice sweep there by Dickinson, but the urgency Fred Rosser came out, you can tell that he feels like he needs to end this matchup as quickly as possible. Into the uh, cover there, and side control as well, now by the Dirty Daddy, getting the advantage in the grappling game in the early going, and Fred Rosser gets to the outside. And again, that history of that elbow, he's had some trouble, including surgery in the past. Yeah, Tommy John surgery, which is rare for a professional wrestler to have to endure that kind of surgery, but he took just a nasty, nasty fall and then re-injuring it with that just vicious assault by Redbeard. You can tell he's just incredibly aware of it. It is at the forefront of his mind in the early going of this matchup. Well, so, with, with so that the, big brace, it's got, a, it's got a target on it to be sure. Absolutely, so the UCL is the ulnar collateral ligament. It's the inside the elbow ligament, so a lot of uh, baseball pitchers. Oh, another pin attempt by Rosser. Oh, and an omoplata transition by Dickinson. Beautiful, he is continuing to attack that damaged arm. That'll do some big damage, and now pulls him. The great white shark 
pulls him into deep water, into the deep ocean here, back to the center of the ring. Rear waist lock, and, and we'll see, you know, it caught up with Rosser as that arm is on the dissection pan early after going for several covers himself. He said, hey, I, I got cleared by a doctor. The doctor said that, you know, I, I could probably use another week to rehab it, but I'm missing no days off. I got a shot to move on in this tournament, and I'm gonna take it. Super slam by Rosser, beautifully done by the prime time player on Primetime Live, looking to put him away. Yeah, no days off and no excuses. We know he is hurting, but he's going to come at Dickinson with everything he has got, and he is he's had an answer. Dickinson came with a game plan of his own, said he's going to pick him apart, obviously alluding that in your arm. The roster's had answers. That seated splash, all the body weight down. That'll take the air out of you in a hurry. That is a lot of weight coming down on the chest of an opponent. It's going to knock all the air out of them and start taking away some of their gas. One of the things you guys mentioned a moment ago was that he was cleared by medical staff. He was kind of cleared. The doctor said that he advised that he did not wrestle today. So he's in there against medical advice. But because it wasn't something like a concussion, they couldn't pull him from the match. So it goes to show how tough he is and how dedicated he is to winning this matchup. No doubt about it. And, uh, you know, despite his best judgment, Dr. James Morgan did give him the clearance to proceed here in the tournament. Knows how important it is. And the Dirty Daddy holding on to that arm bar. A few extra seconds. He had five to break. And now all over Rosser in the corner. He's been attacking that right elbow nonstop. He said that he smells, whoa, huge German suplex. Into the cover immediately now goes Dickinson looking to put him away. Attack the arm, so now you got Rosser's got to think about that. That's always on the forefront of his mind and then eats the big German suplex to boot. If I'm Fred Rosser, I might try and exploit what Peter Avalon did to uh, Chris Dickinson earlier in this tournament, went after that knee. All right. He would absolutely be returning the favor of going after the weakest link on the body. With the amount of damage Dickinson's knee took in that last matchup, it would definitely even the odds if Ross was able to attack him. Gaspin Ferrer right now as Rosser as he is getting blanketed by Dickinson who takes him off his feet with a single shot. Let's talk about the look at that. Clutching the arm as well again, Rosser in big trouble. And now using using the rope here for added leverage. Boy, this is this is devastating here. Yeah, you can tell that the brace is Lid down a little bit. I'm not sure he has the same prophylactic protection from that ulnar collateral brace that he's wearing. Rosser to the outside of the safety for now. For now, Dickinson not going after him. Not sure it's going to stay that way for very long. Dickinson just showing an incredible amount of aggression from the start here. Giving Rosser a bit of a breather, but this has been super physical out of the gate. They both know what is at stake to go to the finals to crown the first ever United World Champion here for United Wrestling Network. Arm drag, takedown on that injured arm. More punishment being dished out. Uh, holding on to that grasp. If Dickinson can get the straight arm bar here, it might be a Enough to get him to the finals. And look at, he's got him in the center of the ring. Dickinson is close to the ropes. Rosser is not. Absolutely. So what he's trying to do, he's trying to get the arm out. I'd like to see Dick Rosser. There we go. Exactly what I was going to say. I'd like to see him get on top and try and stack him and look for some type of pin, just like he did there. This has been all action since the opening bell. Nice suplex by Dickinson into the cover again, going to high impact maneuvers. Ever since this thing started off, Rosser going for the inside cradle. There has been no surcease ever since. I think you hit the nail on the head that Rosser trying to win it right out of the gate, obviously, knowing that he is not 100%, but he is not going to go easy. He will sell himself dearly to try and get to the finals here, but he is in that deep water with that shark, Chris Dickinson. This thing getting physical in a hurry here, Blake, and Rosser going with the headbutt, follows up with a chop. I don't know if I'd use that arm, but he does. You know, the intensity in this matchup, both these guys realize how much is on the line. Winning this matchup could catapult either man's career into the superstar. And you want to have, you know, we talked about Rosser going for the early, the, the quick finish. You want to have low mileage. You still got to win another match to take home the United Wrestling Network title in the finals in a couple weeks' time. And now look at this, just trading in the middle. Trade like Wall Street here on Primetime Live. Yeah, these aren't even just regular strikes. They're throwing headbutt feet. They're getting vicious. This is turning into a complete fist fight. Do you use Viagra or Cialis? Have you been thinking about trying Viagra or Cialis? What if we can promise you the same results for less than $3 a pill? If you're paying $20 or more a pill for Viagra, you're getting taken to the cleaners. Our pill delivers the exact same results for less than $3. We'll do the math for you. You'll save more than $16 a pill for the same results. Want more? We'll give you 40 blue pills or 40 yellow pills for $99 and add four more pills free. You save more than $500. 
Stop overpaying for expensive prescriptions. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know what to do next. You need to call now and get your 44 pills for just $99. Stop overpaying for Viagra. Call us anytime, day or night, and start saving big money for the exact same results. Have your credit card ready. Ordering is fast and easy with your pills delivered to your door in a non-marked package. Call now. Talk about the road that they both took. Rosser surviving. Eric Redner won that match by disqualification. And it was Dickinson defeating longtime uh, mainstay here in United, Peter Avalon. And now isolating the arm again. Oh, put a deep took the brace sleeve. off. Yep, took the brace off. Matt Brace is doing a ton of support for that ulnar collateral ligament. He needs to protect that arm more than ever with that brace being off. But I, I love that no days off, no excuses. You know, we saw him when he was rehabbing earlier in the week. We, we saw him post that video. Said, yeah, I'd love to face you at 100%. And mark my words, one day we will. But for now, I'm taking my shot and I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving everything I've got. I have a ton to of respect for him, for him to step up and take this challenge. Yeah, I mean, that's what we've seen from Fred Rosser throughout his entire career. And just look at the path that, you know, he took on Chris Masters and James Storm in an impromptu triple threat, survived it, won that matchup, and, you know, and then had to deal with that just vicious assault from Redbeard. So he is not going to go away easily. Yeah, but that, yeah, and holding on for dear life right now was Rosser holding on to the trunks. Anything to keep the great white shark from taking a big bite out of that injured arm. Oh my gosh, look at just wrenching, wrenching on the arm. You know, at what point does that arm just go numb and is completely useless for Rosser? I mean, in terms of it going numb, it might already be numb. I don't know how functional that arm is, but it's absolutely a big target and very vulnerable. We've seen Dickinson attacking with strikes, moves like that, slams, and submission holds. He's doing everything he can to damage that right elbow of Fred Rosser. Dickinson in complete control right now, and Rosser's been wrestling everywhere. We've seen him in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, you know, all those battles got to take a toll on him as well. Yeah, racking up a lot of mileage, and you know, you can't sell the Dirty Daddy short whatsoever. Has not lost here on Primetime Live. So he, he really has just been such a standout. So any sort of weakness, he is going to be able to take full advantage. He has his eyes firmly set on that championship. And you mentioned the attack of Avalon on the knee with the chair in the quarterfinal matchup between Dickinson and Avalon. Dickinson for now looks to be getting around pretty well on that leg, on that knee, seems to be a non-factor, and Rosser has had no opportunity to, to try and exploit it. You know, we didn't see any type of protection on Dickinson's knee, and that might have been a smart thing. We don't know how bad it is, but there's no obvious target saying, hey, my knee's really messed up, you should smash it, just like Fred Rosser's elbow did. Maybe that might be some of the difference in why this target is going on. Dickinson also had a crucial extra week off in between this matchup, so that sort of definitely gives him an edge in this in terms of being able to heal up and be more at 100%, but with both these men scheduled, they're certainly not 100% right now. They have been giving it both barrels to one another. You make a great point, Jimbo, that he had a lot more time off to allow some recovery. Fred Rosser's got seven days of recovery, and after that attack by Redbeard after the match, I'm surprised to see him, well, you see him injure his elbow by striking with it there. It takes a lot of out, out of his game plan. He loves those big forearm shots, but right now it's, he's gonna have to swing with his left, and, and now just almost by instinct throwing the right, and that's a sacrifice play, doing more damage, more damage to himself perhaps than his opponent. Sends Dickin to the, Dickinson to the apron. Oh my God, look at this! Trying to suplex him to the floor, what's he doing? He's getting desperate, looking for whatever he can to get the finish. Oh wow. Dropped him right on that hard edge of the apron, and now, Oh my gosh, the pendulum of momentum has switched. Here's an opportunity for Rosser. That lower back of Dickinson could be shot. What power by Fred Rosser there, really digging down deep to pull out, you know, swinging for the fences to try and move on here, and that could turn the tide in this matchup. You know, this might give Rosser a few moments to you know, look at this big slam. Wow, 
This is absolutely going to give Roster a few moments to recover, but the amount of damage on that right elbow, he's not going to be able to recover for weeks for it, likely. We don't even know if he makes it to the finals, if he'll be 100% at the finals. So he needs more than just that big slam to win this matchup. Still to come later on in our main event, it'll be two great veterans going at it. Mike Bennett in De and Davari in the other semifinal matchup. You got to believe that they're stretching out, taping up, getting ready, but you know they got an eye on this as well. And we have never seen Dickinson down for this extended amount of time. He begged for competition. He is getting that and more from Fred Rosser tonight. Got to make a point here. I mean, Dickinson in real trouble. Rosser maybe would have gotten the count out victory if he stayed inside. That would be enough to get you to the finals. But I think the primetime player, Mr. No Days Off, he wants to prove a point. He Absolutely. wants to beat him in the middle. Absolutely. That's the reason he got in here. He came in here to prove that he is a world champion competitor. He wants to get the win the right way. And I really respect that as another competitor. We've seen Dickinson endure a whole hell of a lot, even outside the United Wrestling Network. Took on John Moxley at Bloodsport. What a battle that was. And now up, up top, maybe he was trying to size him up for that gut check. We saw him put away Chris Masters with that a few weeks ago. And now fighting back into this thing is the Dirty Daddy, the Filthy Father. The way Rasha was able to get him elevated, he didn't quite get that gut check, but he's using one arm, he's still making a lot of stuff happen. Man, he uses that elbow again to strike and damages it again. You can see how much mileage that right elbow has. It's a smart move by Dickinson to remove that brace. Swing and a miss there. Another big power slam. That has been a key weapon in the arsenal for Rosser, who tries to do the unthinkable. And man, oh man, only a sliver of light between the referee's hand and the canvas. I'm a big fan of the aggression that Chris Dickinson has, but every now and then aggression works against the guy. We saw him rush in there against Rosser, and Rosser counted him with the power slam. As we mentioned though, Jim, you know, he's been in there. Rosser has with the big and the bad. Eric Redbeard, Chris Masters, James Storm. James Storms we'll, we'll see later on defending the uh, NWA World Tag Team titles. And I think again, not having the use of that arm took him a little bit of extra time to try and get up top. Speaking of Rosser. Definitely slowed him down and now Dickinson making him pay. Once again, attacking that arm, the Dirty Daddy. Seeing more blood in the water. Oh, he caught him there. Oh, bad landing for the Dirty Daddy. Little shades of the Belfast Brawler. Fit Finley there using the, the skirt as a weapon. And you, and you out all the stops. Brilliant move by Rosser. You know, sometimes things happen where he just happened to fall in there and get stuck on that. And Fred Rosser's got the opportunity, and he is taking full advantage of it. And now a, a snap mayor on the outside. We've got a count on as well. they got to be leery. And a seated splash again, but nothing to cushion the blow here. You know, that shot then right down onto the concrete floor. But a double count out here would give somebody, you know, a, a, in essence, a freebie if they make it to the finals in our main event. Yeah, what an interesting thing that would be if that next matchup we have ends up being our finals match. Basically would be for the title. History would be made right here, but not the case right now. And a gator roll Very by smart. Dickinson. Dickinson used that gator roll to put him in. Whoa, whoa, quick tap. Man, you can tell how fast he tapped it. That elbow, seriously, oh, he's not letting go. Somebody needs to do something about this. Oh, boy. Yeah, and the referee has here to get physical. Here is your winner, advancing to the finals of the United World Championship Tournament, Chris Dickinson. Dickinson was indeed a great white shark, and he was hungry. And he had the main course in the form of the arm of Fred Rosser from start to finish. I mean, Rosser started this thing in a pit that he had to climb out of with that injury. He came very close to doing just that. But Dickinson would not be denied. Another intimidating performance by Dickinson. You could see the referee threw up the X. I think Fred Rosser is seriously injured. We have some guys taking him to the back right now. We'll let the people at, no, at home know uh, what his condition is coming up. Looking back at some of the action, that big slam on the apron. Here is the beginning of the end. The gator roll, you know, had him disoriented. And then that straight arm bar, Fujiwara style, really wrenching back. Yeah, and he was able to set that submission up by using that gator roll to get to the middle of the ring and prevent the rope break. Fantastic submission grappling by Chris Dickinson. Gutty effort by both men to determine who should go to the final on one half of the bracket. Both of them should hold their head up high, but it is the Dirty Daddy with his eyes on that goal. Tonight, Nature Boy Ric Flair and Car Shield team up against the expensive Car Repair Brothers for the championship belt. Woo! Love you go on record and say Nature Boy and Car Shield will eliminate 
expensive car repairs when you're the greatest alive, the heavyweight champion, and have Carshield as your partner, you can't lose. Woo! Expensive car repairs? Ric Flair and Carshield are coming for you. Woo! Carshield cars go farther. Call 800-952-1286. Welcome to Fightin' 60, I'm Josh Chernoff. Let's take a quick look at everything Fight has to offer this week in the world of combat sports. Friday, January 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern, Warriors Boxing and Promotions presents Gran Noche de Boxeo Cubano. Then at nine, it's AKA 19, featuring the first title defense for AKA featherweight champion David Bosnick against the undefeated Dakota Hope. On January 29th, Don King presents Return to Greatness, Homecoming at Last. Also Saturday at six, it's Men of War 12. At eight, it's Delta Fighting Championship 2. Then at nine, it's BKFC Fight Night Jackson, Elvin Leon Brito versus Caleb Harris 2. Finally, at nine, it's Pillow Fight Championship Pound Down. As always, check fight.tv for availability and time in your market, as well as our wide array of free content each and every day. I'm Josh Chernoff, and this has been Fight in 60. The following contest is a singles match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Houston, Texas, the superstar, Miranda Alizé. James Alizé successful in her primetime live debut against Christy James out of Brazil. It's a hard hitting, striking matchup. And Alizé impressive in, in victory. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I was incredibly impressed with what I saw from Alizé, and she's gonna look to build on it with a big time win over Heather Monroe here if she can get it done. I mean, that would make her 2-0 on primetime live against two big time opponents. Alizé, Blake, a great striker, including that running knee, the shining wizard that she calls the drive-by. She has hands, feet, and knees on it that are all very dangerous weapons. And introducing her opponent, being coming to the ring by Halston Body. She is the Killer Bay, Heather Monroe. Fans, fans of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood will just ha be happy to see that Heather Monroe found her way out of that Halston Body Bag match. She was involved in a match with Ruby Rays this past weekend on Championship Wrestling from Halloween. What a hard hitting affair that was. But here in Primetime Live, the Killer Bay, uh, one and one's got a victory over Elena Black, and of course that loss back week one against the Brick House Camille, but Heather Monroe stock really rose in that matchup as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, it went down as a loss in the proverbial box score, but you know, if she takes that as a learning experience, because she really pushed Camille, and I think she turned a lot of heads that Heather Monroe, she is a force to be reckoned with. Something interesting you guys mentioned is that Heather Monroe just had a match with Ruby Rays. Ruby Rays and Alizé have significantly different styles of wrestling and body types. So Heather Monroe's gonna have to have a completely different game plan to come in here and score the victory over Alizé. Alizé messing with the hair there. That's not gonna sit well with the Killer Bay. She doesn't like to play games. Breaking down the leg now. And <laughs> turnabout's fair play. Drop toe hold now by Alizé, but you're right. Uh, Alizé may be a little more similar in size and stature and style to Elena Black, who had him in the face last time out. Here on Primetime Live, should be a good one. Both come in with a great camp, and we often talk about training, how important it is. Heather, Heather Monroe, the Keller Bay, out of the famed Santino Brothers Academy here in Southern California. And Ruby Rays herself came from there. And then on the flip side, with Miranda Alizé, trained originally by Booker T, Reality of Wrestling, Houston, Texas. Now has been training south of the border with the Luchadors of Tijuana. So really well-versed in many styles are both. You bring up a great point that, that they both come from great teams. Most people don't realize this, but wrestling is a team sport because you're as good as your team prepares you to be once you get inside the ring. Yeah, you're in there by yourself, but your team prepares you. So it's very important to note that both these girls come from fantastic background and teams. Now you see a little of that lucha, you know, that 
that uh, Heather Monroe would have learned. And now the bypass comes up with the arm dragging in. It's, it's the first time in quite a while that we've seen this much loot uh, out of the Killer Bay. The leg sweep goes immediately to the cover. Leg sweep the other way. So they're going to play the lucha game in the early going here. Alize upstairs and turns it into a Mahistral cradle into the cover. Count it two. Those are some beautiful technical transitions by both these ladies, particularly Alizé. She's small and very nimble and able to use her agility to pull some fantastic throws. Nice wrist control on that takedown by Alizé. Now goes upstairs, gets all of the head scissors takedown. I think that she wanted earlier, although earlier she did call the audible. Alizé is feeling it right now. She's got Heather Monroe in the corner, maybe looking for a monkey flip, but Heather Monroe had it scouted. And you talk about the training of both these ladies. The X factor I see on the outside is that lethal accessory hall body, you know, he's going to try and figure himself into this match at some point. That's a great point that you make because we have seen him time and time again find out, find little places for him to sneak himself into the match and have a big impact. And we saw that with Elena Black. Big shot there by Heather Monroe. Yeah, Halston, we'll see if he becomes a factor. Saying my rules, my home, and Heather Monroe now going for the cover. Center of ring and women's division action. Since week one, that match we talked about with Heather and Camille, you know, Thunder Rosa and her defenses ultimately losing the title to Serena Deeb and, you know, all the great female competition we've seen has truly been a fixture here on Primetime Live and we want you to weigh in. If you're liking what you see, hashtag Primetime Live. Join the chat. Flex by the Killer Bay. Yeah, you talk about the women's division here on Primetime Live. The phrase that comes to my mind every week, cover top tier. And that's what we've seen week in and week out from these ladies. And it just, they continue to impress Alizé and Heather Monroe. Whoever wins this match, they are just poised to catapult themselves even further into the division. Stiff shot there from Monroe. And she's got Alizé at her mercy in the corner. Something worth noting is once Heather Monroe lands several, uh, lands an attack or something, she takes a second and kind of admires her work. Right now it's working just fine for her. But that's a small window of time that Alizé could potentially use to counter. And Alizé did just there, got out of harm's way, had that well scouted, you know. Heather Monroe loves to follow up with the acceleration, using her body in the, in the corner, press the offense, and Alizé was wise to it, had it scouted, kicks the leg and the rug out from under the killer bay. Woo! Thank you for calling Car Shield. This is the Nature Boy. How may I help you? I feel at home working with Car Shield. Nice spreadsheet. Oh. Woo! People say, Rick, you're an icon, the 16 time world champ. What brought you here? I say, Car Shield administrators help save customers over a billion dollars. And Slick Rick loves saving money. Woo! Car Shield cars go farther. Woo! Alize needs to be careful who gets behind her. She cannot turn her back on House of Bodhi. House of will make her pay for that. Oh, and, and Alize having a little, uh, taking some time to enjoy her work as well. Celebrate a little bit, perhaps prematurely, but man, really working over the arm. Yeah, I think Alize saw something when she scored on Monroe. She went to the outside. Monroe immediately favoring that right arm, that right shoulder. And now Alize zeroing in on it. So as I mentioned, where Heather takes a second and sometimes admires her work, Alizé stays attached. She did three arm snaps, put her face down, and then stomped the shoulder. These chaining together of attacks, I think, is what's going to start giving Alizé the ability to get ahead. Superstar is relentless with this attack. Was, and going back to the air again, you know, saying, having her way with the Killer Bay right now, trying to make a statement. You know, there's big time bragging rights on the line here. Uh, you know, eventual. United Women's Championship at play at some point as well. So important battle in the pecking order. And biting now is Alizé. I mean, just digging deep into the playbook. I think Alizé's doing a lot of different things. These noogies, the biters. Are, to start getting Heather Monroe emotional. If you can get somebody emotional, you can typically get them to make poor decisions inside the ring. Let's see if Heather's going to start doing that or if she's going to fight well biting again Someone, uh, finger foods i guess but man really wrenching on the shoulder and now shot after shot 
And a lot of nerve endings there in the shoulder. So Alize's doing a fantastic job. She kept her knee on Heather's back, keeping her stuck to the mat so she could continue to land those ground and pound shots to the shoulder. Official Nick Bonanno, uh, you know, allowing some leniency, but this is a hotly contested women's division matchup. But man, just a, a real bona fide mean streak here in the superstar Miranda Alice. A. I mean, she was aggressive against Christy James, but this is another level. Into the cover goes ahead of Monroe, and now catches her right into a submission, position to submission, and all kinds of locked up right now. Tables have turned in an instant for Heather Monroe and Miranda Alizé. Now Alizé fighting and she goes right back to work on that arm. What high level transitions by both girls. The fluidity that you saw Heather Monroe do that attack and then slip into the submission. Then Alizé slip out of the submission and land some striking attacks her own. Incredible submission grappling by both ladies. Again, you know, with the, the news of an upcoming United Women's title, the, the NWA World Women's title changing hands on this program. I mean, it's been high profile stuff. So a win here is extremely important. But I mean, gosh, this arm after this attack, I gotta believe is just gonna be almost useless for the Killer Bay. Yes, yeah, so not only is Heather's right arm gonna be the ability to attack significantly reduced, but the ability to defend. That is basically just becomes a target and a useless weapon. You know, right now she's throwing some shots with it, but you can see Alizé's not really hurt by those strikes. We're starting to see that damage add up. Ooh. Heather Monroe's able to get her body behind that last strike, though, put Alizé down. Sacrifice play with the clothesline. Here's something else that you gotta keep in mind, gentlemen, as Heather Monroe using extremities that haven't been taken to task. Heather Monroe, as she goes for the senton and lands, she has to drop levels and use that upper body for the bad Bichinoku driver. I don't know that she's gonna have the strength in that arm and shoulder to do that as she now ties up Alizé, perhaps gonna think seven years stretch, but stomps her face first instead. That might have been the play that Alizé came in thinking that, you know, if I take that arm away from her, she won't be able to use her biggest weapon. Cover here from Heather Monroe, too. Alizé able to stay alive in this matchup. Heather Monroe just racked in pain, still trying to get the feeling back in that arm. You can see Alizé feeling her face. That big stomp, a big thing we say in fighting is you make your opponent taste their blood and they want to go home. Let's see how she reacts this, because she just got her face stomped through the mat. Let's see how bad she still wants to fight. Going for it. Again, well scouted is Alizé when it comes to the offensive playbook of the Killer Bay ripcord. Again, holding on to that shoulder. Fireman's carry position. Just stringing together the offense. Might be time for the drive-by. Oh, Alex for the drop kick instead. Calling the changeup, throwing the changeup pitch into the cover. Hooks the arm, close, very, very close. Fantastic agility, she is so nimble. The way that she can just throw knees, strikes, bounce off the ropes, and come flying back with something. Incredible barrage of attacks by Alizé. Looks like that taste of her own blood might have just spurred her on. Not really surprised, because Alizé, she is as rough and tumble as they come. Well, she's trained by Booker T. That does not surprise me at all. Booker T is one of the baddest dudes around. Look out here, always thinking pitch breaker. Didn't catch it, now a cutter the other way. By Alizé, scrambles into the cover, sense of urgency. And another near fall. And now right into the arm bar, and after all that residual damage, might be coming close to a submission victory here. Ooh, turns the weight in though. Nice counter by the Killer Bay. That was, that was very smart to go for that pin there because that arm was deep inside the arm bar. Pulling out all the stomps, you might say, James Kincaid. Well, you know, going back to that cover, when Heather Monroe got the shoulder up, it just left that right arm exposed. Tremendous strategy from Alizé. She is zeroed in on it. Yeah! And this is a sprint. There it is. Bad Bishi Noku. Driver, one, two, three. Here is your winner, Heather Monroe. I gotta say, TK, that might be the first time I haven't seen how Simpodi put his hands inside the match. Well, I mean, Heather Monroe, I think, came here with something to prove. I mean, there was a there was a lot of talk between these two coming in social media. Here you see the skills on display, the snap suplex, caught her, and, and really sacrificed play with all that pain that shoulder endured. Heather Monroe had to fight, had to earn this win. Incredibly impressive effort. You see her still favoring that arm. But yeah, what, just what a tremendous job by Heather Monroe. Didn't need the X Factor in Halston body. She did this on her own. She should be dang proud of her effort tonight on Hashtag Primetime Live.
I think it's worth noting the effectiveness of that bad Michinoku driver is due to her immediately going for the pin. She doesn't waste any time. As soon as they hit, she has that leg wrapped up and got the pin and worked again for her tonight here on Primetime Live. At Car Shield, we're always looking for the brightest talent. Thank you for calling Car Shield. How may I help you? This style and profile and limousine ride, wheel and deal and son of a gun is here to tell you that Car Shield administrators make sure you don't have to pay for expensive auto repairs. Woo! We want our employees to be themselves. Woo! We encourage teamwork. And woo! Where's my yogurt? How'd that taste? But at the end of the day, it's all about the customer. Car Shield's doing it better than anybody else alive. They're the money saving, roadside assisting, tow truck getting, rental car providing, son of a guns protecting you from expensive car breakdowns. And one more thing Car Shield cars go farther. Woo! Call 800 952 1286. Welcome to Fightin' 60, I'm Josh Chernoff. Let's take a quick look at everything Fight has to offer this week in the world of combat sports. Friday, January 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern, Warriors Boxing and Promotions presents Gran Noche de Boxeo Cubano. Then at nine, it's AKA 19, featuring the first title defense for AKA featherweight champion David Bosnick against the undefeated Dakota Hope. On January 29th, Don King presents Return to Greatness, Homecoming at Last. Also Saturday at six, it's Men of War 12. At eight, it's Delta Fighting Championship 2. Then at nine, it's BKFC Fight Night Jackson, Elvin Leon Brito versus Caleb Harris 2. Finally, at nine, it's Pillow Fight Championship Pound Down. As always, check fight.tv for availability and time in your market, as well as our wide array of free content each and every day. I'm Josh Chernoff, and this has been Fight in 60. semi-final match in the United World Championship Tournament. Introducing first from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing at 206 pounds, Sean Davari. Last week, ladies and gentlemen, I stood right here before you and told you I'm not sure that Sean Davari has what it takes to hang in the wrestling business anymore. But after I pinned Rocky Romero, and after I advanced one block further in this tournament to crown a new world champion, I started remembering exactly who the hell Sean Davari is. And for the past seven days, I seem to be training a little bit harder in the gym. I seem to be moving a little bit quicker in the ring. And I seem to be walking around town with my head held a little bit higher. And I'm starting to remember what it feels like to be a champion. So tonight, Mike Bennett, you know I think the world of you is a talent. But unfortunately, I'm sorry. You're just another pro wrestler standing in my way. My way of remembering exactly who Sean Davari is. Sean Davari, champion. All those championship instincts coming back. Yeah, you can absolutely, what he said last week and this week, a massive difference in his mentality. He's ready, he's not questioning himself if he's a champion anymore, he's ready to win that title. Well, one heck of a way to build confidence taking on and taking out Rocky Romero from New Japan Pro Wrestling last week it in was the quarterfinals. Incredible victory by Sean Davari, and yeah, you just see an entirely different guy now here. You can take it all the way. And introducing his opponent from Boston, Massachusetts, weighing in at 206 pounds, Mike Bennett. Bennett taking a good look at the title there. And let's hear more from Bennett. You know, it's moments like this that I'm often reminded of my favorite musical, Hamilton, where he says, I am not throwing away my shot. And that's exactly how I feel right now. I am not throwing away this opportunity. And as I look across that ring at Sean Davari, I'm also reminded of 2020, meaning anything can happen because like three weeks ago, Sean, you weren't even in this tournament. So you take my desire, my motivation, and my passion, and you take the fact 
that it's 2020 and anything can happen, John, I am not throwing away my shot. Passion personified by both Davari and Bennett with a trick on the spear right at the opening bell. That's part one, guys. That's part one. He loves that as the setup. Yeah, could hit him with a power. You can see him holding his AC joint. He might have hurt himself with that spear just now. It's not going to matter if he hits the Hail Mary, and that's exactly what he's trying to do. But you're right, the shoulder gave out. Yeah, he must have landed weird on that when he hit the spear. I don't know if he has like an AC separation, maybe a trap uh, tear. It's, it's hard to tell. He's injured, though. That yeah. is some serious hard luck for Mike Bennett. Could have punched his ticket to the finals right there. But well, yeah, but Davari is punished as well from that spear. You can see he has not gotten back to his feet since rolling back out, holding his abdo abdominal region. I mean, he ate the full brunt of that spear, and now they're on the outside. Anything goes for 10 seconds, especially with a shot to get to the final. So expect that sense of urgency into the post goes Davari, or rather Bennett. My gosh. But smart move by Davari to send Bennett into the post. I think he realized just what injury that Bennett has sustained there. Again, tough break if Bennett is not able to continue, but. Tavari has sustained some damage to that midsection from that spear. And Blake, that, that, that post didn't do the shoulder of Bennett any, any favors. Absolutely not. Tavari mentioned last week that he had a bad elbow, a bad shoulder, and a bad this and that, and he probably realizes how effective it is to attack these weak links. He saw the shoulder shirt, and he went for it. He said he wants to be champion, and he is fighting like he's going to take home that belt. And I got to think that maybe Tavari, you know, with a little less mileage on him, big shots, and... You know, some of the great stars of this great sport will tell you, as we mentioned last time out, Davari notoriously a, a heavy hitter. You know when you're in there with Davari. Yeah, you know when you're in there, and you know that you've been in there with him for a long time after. I'm sure Rock Romero is so yeah. fit, but what a launching post by Mike Bennett, sending him sternum first right there into the turnbuckle went Davari. A whole lot of velocity and momentum behind that. And uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Davari hit hard and heavy, crumbles to the canvas. Bennett still clutching that, uh, that shoulder region, perhaps the uh, trapezius. It's worth noting though, Davari's been clutching his gut. He was hit by a huge spear walking in and then just got thrown into the turnbuckle. He looks like he's having some damage with his core, like he's it's seriously being attacked. And I think both wearing the stars of battle from the from the first round, the quarterfinals in as well. I mean, Bennett found himself in a hellacious battle with Kevin Martinson of the United Wrestling Network. Nice swinging neck breaker there by Davari and you can see the pain. You can see the pain, the body language on Bennett. You know that he is hurt. Yeah, the way he's moving and grasping his neck, he might even have some type of bulging disc or something, which would be even worse than a separated AC joint. You, you see the way he opened that neck up there and attacked that too? I think he might be thinking the same thing. You, you never want to see anybody get injured, but certainly not when we are you know, working toward crowning the first ever United World Champion here at the United Wrestling Network. And you know, just somebody that has worked so hard like Mike Bennett to get back on track, and he is on this quest, this redemption tour, as he calls it, and this could be a major, major setback. Well, we saw, you know, the impact that injuries can play in this tournament. Rosser came in with that elbow er injury earlier in the night, came up just short against the Dirty Daddy, who advanced to the finals. Both these guys had tough quarterfinal matches. There's that neck breaker that Davari was looking for. More pain and pressure on the shoulder. And, but we have seen from Bennett, we saw it against Nick Aldis, the national treasure. We saw it in an out and out war with a physical beast, J.R. Kratos, who is one half of the tag team champions now out of nowhere. He's, Bennett's got that never say die attitude. Yeah, and no one has, oh, what a shot. Bennett is just laid bare there. Davari is gonna open him up. Wow. Those are some big shots by Davari. And because Bennett's arms are tied up, he was completely unable to protect himself. Right now, he is out right now as Bennett, seemingly, but we've said that time and time before, and the resiliency as of late, the will to win, the will to fight on, legendary by Mike Bennett. But man, look at this, all tied up, and, and that vice on the neck, gonna put all kinds of pressure, and the arm is isolated, separating that shoulder. Exactly, the way he has the arm isolated as well is gonna put a tremendous extra amount of torque on the neck if that arm was not behind the shoulder. Welcome to Fightin' 60, I'm Josh Chernoff. Let's take a quick look at everything Fight has to offer this week in the world of combat sports. Friday, January 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern, Warriors Boxing and Promotions presents Gran Noche de Boxeo Cubano. 
Then at 9, it's AKA 19 featuring the first title defense for AKA featherweight champion David Bosnick against the undefeated Dakota Hope. On January 29th, Don King presents Return to Greatness, Homecoming at Last. Also Saturday at 6, it's Men of War 12. At 8, it's Delta Fighting Championship 2. Then at 9, it's BKFC Fight Night Jackson, Elvin Leon Brito versus Caleb Harris 2. Finally, at 9, it's Pillow Fight Championship Pound Down. As always, check fight.tv for availability and time in your market, as well as our wide array of free content each and every day. I'm Josh Chernoff, and this has been Fight in 60. Tonight, Nature Boy Ric Flair and Car Shield team up against the expensive Car Repair Brothers for the championship belt. Woo! Let me go on record and say Nature Boy and Car Shield will eliminate expensive car repairs when you're the greatest alive, the heavyweight champion, and have Car Shield as your partner, you can't lose. Woo! Expensive car repairs? Ric Flair and Car Shield are coming for you. Woo! Car Shield cars go farther. Call 800-952-1286. Ringside, <laughs> more chaos filling over. That table's gotten some action tonight. The, the chaos that was the NWA World Tag Team title match earlier before the bell ever rang. And now Davari sends Bennett hard and heavy into the timekeeper's table. And again, you expect the referee perhaps to allow some leniency because you know we, we really need to have a winner here. We want to have a finals to determine the United Wrestling Network World Champion for the very first time. Davari was not about to let there be a double count on a veteran move him. He slid in to, to restart the count, slid back yes. out, and then brought Bennett back to the ring. Super kick. This is a, a battle, James, of two yes. former X Division champions. Both were greats in Impact yes. Wrestling. Look out here, definitely Driver. Maybe a little sending a little message oh. to the Dirty Daddy. Dickinson has put a lot of people down with that Death Valley Driver. Can Bennett put down Davari and punch his ticket to the finals? Another thing about him. Cover him. Him using Dickinson's finish. If they do Three. meet in the finals, I wonder how Dickinson's gonna feel about that. Oh. I'd imagine he's not gonna Come like it too on. much. Davari though is out, but he cannot capitalize. Bennett cannot capitalize because he has got Six. lightning bolts of pain just striking through Seven. that shoulder. I mean, look at how long Davari's been down. And and oh, yeah, double count. And Bennett could oh. Bennett could do nothing about it. And Davari goes right back to the striking. I mean, Davari's got one speed. That's a good speed. But he's in reverse now because of the attack of Iron Mike Bennett. Yeah, Tavari's been doing a very good job of attacking Bennett's arm early on in the match. I'd like to see him get back to that, maybe even using a submission hold. We've got Mike Bennett coming back, throwing some hands. We've got Tavari flat on his back there for a second with that right hand. Bennett now trying to keep the pedal to the metal. Variation of the Brain Buster there, drives him down. That's out of the playbook of Kevin Martinson, who he faced in the quarterfinals. Center of the ring, deep hook the leg. Going to the finals, no, only a count of two. Boy, you talk about, you know, Davari showed that roadmap of pain. And, you know, Mike Bennett has certainly put a lot of mileage on him. I like to compare him to Jim Braddock, the Cinderella man, just in terms of everything that he has gone through in his career. Could be setting Davari up, though, for another yeah. spear. Can he hit it? No, Davari had it scouted this time. Well, he might. He wants to move to the final so he can fight for titles and turtles. But he doesn't have the opportunity right now because Davari looking for another neck breaker. Shrugged off. Now it's Davari paying the price. Exploders! Suplex stacking him up is mercy. Get the cover, that could be all. Oh, close call, man. What an impressive throw there by Bennett. Impressive throw and then a great cover. You saw him catch the leg and sit his hip through. He really had Davari's shoulders down. Davari had to really dig deep to kick out. This goes to show you how much the opportunity to become the first ever United Wrestling Network world champion means to these two. And he's got a position, maybe spear again. No wise to it. Oh, my goodness, to the post. See, Bennett used that spear early on. And Davari didn't see it coming, but now he's been waiting for him. That's twice in a row we've seen him counter that spear. He was, he was looking for that hammer lock. Larry at shades of his brother, Aria Davari. This is how he beat Romero. This is how he beat Romero with fundamentals. Almost pulls it off again. 
God, almost pulled the rabbit out of his hat twice and was headed to the finals. Davari in disbelief. But going back to that spear by Mike Bennett, that was the worst possible outcome as Davari was able to get out of the way and send him post first into that injured shoulder. What a battle, what a war. These guys have fought everywhere. Every major promotion now right here in the epicenter of professional wrestling, Thunder Studios, and Iron Mike living up to that moniker saying, bring it. What bring do you the got? Thunder. What more do you have? Super kick again. This time it floors Davari. This is turning into a firework show. Yeah, Bennett has been unleashing a barrage of different attacks on Davar. He's definitely making a huge comeback here. If he can keep this momentum up, there's the spear again! Closing the gap in a hurry. Zero to painful in 1.5 seconds. But can he get him down for the three count? No, because the veteran wears of Davari to escape and buy some time on the outside. What a war so far. Bennett got all of that spear again on Davari. And he looks about as fired up as we have seen him. Mike Bennett in full control now back to that table. Back to that timekeeper's table. And now, oh my god. Oh god. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, guys. Oh, no, no. Bennett's got him hooked. Yeah. Bennett's got him hooked. Oh! Hail Mary! Mercy! And there's no buddy full of grace straight through the table to the concrete. We can only hope these two are okay here, guys. Davari looks limp. Did you just see the way his arm dropped? Let's go, let's go. I mean, pile driver straight through that timekeeper's table. Let's take a look at the let's, replay. Yeah, let's take a look. Take it. Take us through it, guys. Spiked him. Unbelievable, and now the gut wrench just trying, there's pieces everywhere. Adnan Qureshi's brought the bell over here, because we're gonna need it eventually. Maybe not, this war may never end. And Bennett, Bennett's only got one arm. He's struggling to try and get Davari in there. Had he been able to land that inside the ring, he might have already gotten the three count and been going on to the finals. Davari's feet are under the ropes right now, so Bennett is gonna have to drag him out, but Davari really has not moved other, other than stirring a little bit and crawling towards the ring. If he can maybe pull him back, Bennett might still get the job done here. Damage is done. And he pointed to the title, guys. Will he move on to the finals and have a shot at it? Hill Mary yet again, throwing the long bomb all the way to the end zone and the finals and wins! Here is your winner, advancing to the finals of the United World Championship Tournament, Mike Bennett! Sometimes it comes down to who wants it more. And who wants a world title more than this guy? The answer really is nobody. He took that extra step. Pile driver through the table, rolls him in, doubles up, and gets the win. Now we got our two finalists, Mike Bennett, the veteran, against Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson, the young lion. Wow. And here it is, James. Let's look, take a look at the brackets. I mean, but both guys had no easy road to get to the finals. The Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson, will face off with Mike Bennett, the miracle man, both you know, Dickinson want a competition. Mike Bennett wants redemption. One of them will get their way in the finals. Absolutely, the absolute animalistic dominance of Dickinson thus far. The Cinderella story, as you said, of Mike Bennett trying to restore order and, and glory to his name. What an incredible war this was in the finals of the tournament as we relive some of the action, including just that death-defying pile driver through the table. One more for good measure. And what a warrior Davari was as well. Does he still have it? Indeed he does. But what he does not have is what this man has, and that's a shot at that. The United Wrestling Network World Champion. I tell you what, this United World Title Tournament is something to see. What a back and forth contest between Dickinson and Rosser. In the end, the damage done the arm by Redbeard in Rosser's quarterfinals match, that just proved too much. And Dickinson was savvy, capitalizing with the arm bar to gain submission victory. And man, oh man, one for the record books between Davari and Bennett, both athletes showing they belong in the title hunt. A match that really could have gone either way. And it took two pile drivers, one through the timekeeper's table, for Bennett to gain victory. So next week, we will see Rosser taking on Davari, both trying to get a mark back in the win column, plus a match of the year contender for the United Wrestling Network from Championship Wrestling in Atlanta, Mike Bennett taking on Jonathan Gresham. I was there for the call on this one. I got to tell you folks, this match, you'll be on the edge of your seat. Well, that's going to do it for this week. For all of us here at the United Wrestling Network, I'm Gilbert Corsi saying thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on Championship Wrestling, presented by CarShield.